I feel that a lot of the advice about which indoor air quality monitors are best is a bit off. Some of the most well-regarded and popular monitors just have a couple things about them that, for me, make them annoying to use. So I'll tell you which ones I use instead and why. I'll start with CO2 monitors and then get to particulate monitors later. And I did a particulate monitor test that will blow your mind, and I do not say that lightly. But first, CO2. Two very popular CO2 monitoring brands that I feel could use improvement are Air Gradient and Air Things. Now, I really like Air Gradient as a company in particular, and Air Things is fine. However, both of them use a CO2 calibration system that I feel is not only annoying, but can be inaccurate in some situations. It's called Automatic Baseline Calibration, or ABC. What that means is that the monitor takes about a week to establish its initial baseline and then keeps adjusting that baseline over time. During that period, the CO2 reading is basically like a work in progress while the ABC algorithm decides what it thinks fresh air looks like in your home. People often say that you can help the process along by exposing it to outdoor-like air at least once, usually by opening windows. I believe ABC is used so the sensor can auto-correct drift over time without manual calibration. Over the past few years in multiple homes, I've tested both the AirThings View Plus and the Air Gradient One, and they were both pretty inaccurate for me. I compared their readings to a professional CO2 monitor and to my other pre-calibrated ones, and they were each off by around 100 parts per million, which is a lot. I watched them both with squinted eyes as the sun rose and fell in the sky, day in and day out, waiting the recommended time for them to become more accurate, but they never did. So why? I think it could be because I continuously bring fresh air into my home with an energy recovery ventilator. That keeps CO2 levels fairly low all the time. I mean, maybe that messed with the establishment of the baseline, but even so, my CO2 levels still do fluctuate, and on the second of my air things calibrations, I did too, I tried letting the CO2 concentration build in my house and then opening windows near the devices and even putting them outside, and it still did not help. And I don't think it's just my weird mechanically ventilated house. I've seen plenty of reports from people in normal homes without mechanical ventilation having the same problem, even when they follow the open the windows advice. I think the kicker here is that CO2 patterns just vary a lot between homes. I'm not saying that these monitors can't be accurate in other people's houses. I'm just saying they've been consistently off in mine, and I've heard from others with the same issue. Even if we give them the benefit of the doubt on accuracy though, they've still been an absolute headache for me. Waiting one to two weeks for your product to work is just not an acceptable user experience. When I told Air Gradient about my problem, and by the way, they're really nice people, they told me I could manually calibrate the unit instead. But I just feel bad about recommending that my viewers do that. I mean, I feel that a product should work perfectly right out of the box, not require you to dig through help docs for alternative methods. The calibration should be done in the factory completely, is my belief. So that's why I use the Aronet 4 instead. And no, this video is not sponsored by them. Why do I use the Aronet 4? It is pre calibrated, so you don't have to wait one to two weeks while it learns from your window opening patterns. I've had mine for several years and the sensor has not drifted. It's portable and the batteries last for years because it uses e-ink, like Kindles. I mean, that's pretty cool. It measures temperature, humidity, and CO2 very accurately. It uses an NDIR sensor for CO2, which actually both the air gradient and air things use as well. It's an accurate sensor. Which begs the question, actually, if Air Gradient and Air Things just calibrated CO2 completely in, in factory, would I recommend them? No, I personally wouldn't. Why? Because the way they measure particulate isn't my favorite either. The vast majority of the popular indoor air quality monitors give mass concentration, which is the total particle mass per unit volume. 
So I actually prefer a different metric. I prefer number concentration, otherwise known as particle count, which is how many particles are in a given volume. There's a few reasons why I prefer count, but the main one is this. Units that measure mass don't feel sensitive enough for me and lack meaningful range at lower levels. And what I mean by that is that they show a reading of zero at a range that's a bit too wide for my liking. I'm gonna stop talking about it and show you what I mean with a test. This is a comparison of my Dylos DC1100 Pro, which gives counts, and the Air Gradient 1, which gives masses. For the Dylos, let's focus on the count on the left, which is around 22, and the Air Gradient's mass is at zero. You can see the scales for each. Now let's see what happens when I shake out a dirty towel. And the Dylos is steadily rising, past 200, past 250 and the air gradient is still at zero. Oh, the air gradient is now at one. Oh wait, and back to zero again, while the dialus continues to climb past 400, past 500. Now I'm gonna shake out an even dirtier towel, and the air gradient is still at zero. Oh, one now as the dialus rises past 800, well into the fair range. Oh, and the air gradient has reached two, which is still considered good air quality, just as the dialus breaks past 1,050, which is poor air quality. Oh no, and the air gradient is back down at one for some, zero, one. As the dialus continues to rise ever higher, past 1,800, and the air gradient has reached two as the dialos crest the 2000 mark. So once again, the air gradient says the air quality is good while the dialos says it's poor. Air gradient's online dashboard has more metrics, but they still don't feel sensitive enough for me. Even PM10, which includes larger particles, is at zero when the dialos is in the 2000s. If you change the settings, you can get it to display PM.3 counts, but that's a very specific size that's just a small snapshot of the particle picture. It's just 43. This is what the dashboard looked like at the very beginning of the test. Overall, not too different, huh? So, yeah, <laughs> I think that gives a pretty good indication of why I do not prefer Air Gradient and the other brands that display mass. So I tried this with Air Things as well and got similar results. I mean, do I, do I even have to explain more about why I prefer the particle count of the Dylos DC1100 Pro? I mean, I think that test speaks for itself, right? Maybe, but I'll explain anyway. Here's my theory. When I shook out the towel, I probably kicked up a lot of tiny lightweight particles that the dialos could count in terms of sheer numbers. But the air gradient, which is looking at the total mass, didn't really pick up anything significant because those particles didn't weigh much. Because of that, the dialos seems to be more sensitive. You can use it to develop a genuine intuitive understanding of how particle counts rise and fall in your home based on activity. Think of all the information you'd miss if you just use the air gradient in that test. To conclude, I am not claiming that air gradient or air things are inaccurate. They just measure differently in a way that feels less useful to me. And I encourage you guys to test for yourself and draw your own conclusions. Now, I, I'm pretty sure a vocal minority of you are, are preparing angry comments right now. So let me just say, I'm not saying mass is a useless measurement. It's still what agencies use for standards and some testers use mass, which can be done well. And I don't really mind mass for outdoor air quality because like, I mean, like most of the data that's available is in mass and it's fine. <sighs> Moving on, I'm gonna try to read your mind. And you might also be thinking, but the monitors you don't like measure VOCs. What about those? Most home VOC monitors estimate something called total VOCs and they do it poorly. The VOC sensors drift, they respond to humidity, can't distinguish between harmless compounds and toxic ones, and they miss certain compounds entirely. So don't use them to test how well your carbon air purifier works. They're not accurate for that. The best way to assess VOCs is not a product. I'm not gonna try to sell you anything. In most cases, it is still just your sense of smell. To summarize this whole video, 
I like the Aronet 4 for CO2 because it comes pre-calibrated, so you don't have to wait one to two weeks for a hopefully accurate reading. It's portable, energy efficient, and accurate. I like the Dylos DC1100 Pro for particulate because its particle counts feel more sensitive to me than the particle mass that other popular monitors use. I'm planning a couple videos about radon monitors and outdoor air quality monitors next, so subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss it. For now, I'll put my favorites of those in the description of this video so you don't have to wait if you need one and you feel like just trusting me. The other monitors I recommended are also linked in the description. I have a free email course about the five mistakes I made that worsened my home's air quality and what to do instead. Sign up at the link in the description. Also, I have a home inspection guide that teaches you how to spot building flaws in water damage. This is a skill that you can carry with you through life to help you not only choose healthy homes, but also better maintain or diagnose your current one. And I also just added a guide to it that teaches you what to do if you're stuck in a moldy house. If you've been watching my content for years, you know, you, you like every video, you comment, you build the things that I recommend, you've gotten a lot of value from it, please consider supporting me on Patreon because it's only five to $10 a month for you. But for me, I mean, it's the same amount, but it makes my life. You know, if, if, if like 10 more of you guys just gave $5 a month, I would just, oh, it would help me out so much. Anyway, my fellow renegades, I salute you.